Soldering connections to a battery is dangerous and can ruin the battery. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to attach batteries and connections to a wire using conductive glue. We're going to be using conductive glue to refurbish one of these Aculux torches, which you can find in the glove box of an early Mercedes R107 and also some of the early BMWs. I'm showing you how to remove this torch from the glove box without damaging the glove box and also how to take the torch to pieces without cracking any of the parts. Then we're going to be showing you how to replace the rechargeable battery and also how to replace the bulb with a modern LED bulb without making the mistake that I made. Now, there are videos online showing you how to do that by soldering parts onto the battery here. But in the factory, those metal connections were spot welded onto this battery. And if you don't happen to have a spot welder, it's not a great idea soldering onto a lithium battery cell because you're likely to damage the cell. So I'm going to show you how to make up conductive glue, electrically conductive glue using liquid electrical tape and graphite powder mixed in the correct proportions. Now we're gonna be mixing these two products together to make a glue, but just in case you haven't come across liquid electrical tape or graphite powder, I'm just very quickly gonna show you what they're actually used for. What this is used for is if you've got plugs like this with exposed wires, what you can do is rather than try to wrap a piece of black electrical tape around there to shield those wires, you can just use a very small dab of this. That will dry in about four hours, and then that will completely protect those wires, both from moisture and obviously accidentally touching them. So you may come across parts in your car where you've got an exposed wire, and it may not actually be possible to loop electrical tape all the way around that. And once again, this is where liquid electrical tape comes in handy, because you can just effectively paint it on, and that will create a perfectly insulated watertight seal. What we're going to mix into our liquid tape to make it electrically conductive is graphite powder. Now, this is the stuff here that you would use to lubricate a lock like this. And you should do that every few months. What some people make the mistake of doing is using WD-40 and squirting some WD-40 down there. But WD-40, the WD stands for water displacement, and that's exactly what this does. It can act as a lubricant, but if you use it as a lubricant for locks, you'll find that it attracts dust and effectively makes a small grinding paste inside there and can actually make the lock really sticky. What you should be using is graphite powder. And when you buy this for locks, it comes with a very small tip like that that fits inside the lock and you just give it a few squeezes and that will lubricate your lock. We're going to use one and a half parts graphite powder and one part liquid tape. Now, if you've got graphite powder in this form, which you use for lubricating locks, you'll have a very thin nozzle on it and it's best to take that off and just put a little bit in a old container. Like so, we're going to be mixing up more than we actually need because it's very difficult to mix up tiny quantities of this stuff. Next up, we're just going to add a little bit of this. And we're going to use a piece of wire to mix that. What you need to do is just you get enough graphite in there so that it makes an electrical contact and that the gluing properties of the actual liquid glue are strong enough to glue the wire and the metal to the battery. Once you've mixed this together, all you need to do is just glue it to the battery like so. This is our test piece. We're just going to leave that for a few hours to dry and then we're going to test the electrical conductivity at this end of the wire and see if we can light a light bulb up. It's the next day and our wire has glued on there successfully and you can see that that now lights a light bulb. So here we are up in the ramp on my 1976 280SL, it's a left-hand drive car. So the first thing we're going to try and do is see if this torch wiggles out. You are going to use the wiggling back and forwards method. Make sure you hold on to this because you do not want to tear this if at all possible. Those of you with good eyesight will see this little metal clip here and that slides towards you if it's not rusted solid and that will release this here. Eventually, after a lot of messing about, you will be able to pull that clip out. This one's in really good condition. That should then just come down like so, 
allowing you to unplug it here. Those plugs can be an absolutely nightmare to separate, especially if your hasn't been off before. So use a big wide blade screwdriver and just twist gently. So there we have it. We managed to get that torch and clip out without breaking it. It's actually in really good condition as well. So we're gonna and take this to pieces, put a new battery in and refurbish this now. So here we've got three fairly typical examples. This one here is in mint condition, other than the fact that the slider doesn't work um, and the battery inside it is long since flat. Here we have one where the slider is missing. Once again, the battery is flat and the metal clip that holds it to the glove box is rusty. And here we have one that came out of the parts car, which is fairly typical. It's stuck solid in here, missing the glass section and the bulb, plus the slider is stuck. So I'm hoping that from these three here, we are going to be able to get two perfectly working units. And this one here can be our parts unit where we'll take things like the slider from it. Now these torches are just clipped together or possibly lightly glued together. And the way to get them apart is to have the label facing up and the switch facing away from you and try to take, try to take the top bit off like so. And you'll do that just by getting a small knife, Stanley blade or a blunt kitchen knife in these gaps here and very gently levering this up. The front um, bulb cover here just slots in like so. It's just held in place, that's not glued in. And similarly, the end bit as well, it may be glued on yours, but that should also come out like that. Once you've cut that spot weld, this battery will just come out. On this particular unit, it was so rusted that it came out without me having to do any cutting. Now this little section here will also come out. Now you'll notice there's a little cut in the plastic just there. And that's because this part of the fitting here sits inside this plastic circle and it basically goes through that little cut in the plastic. So you have that side there touching the side of the battery. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is clean up all of these contacts with a little Dremel tool. They should all be nice and shiny. This is the torch out of a parts car and we're gonna need this slider. So let's see if we can separate it without breaking it. it does not wanna come, it might be an idea to pour some WD-40, your penetrating fluid down there to see if we can get some into the gaps. Next, I'm just gonna run this under boiling water in the hope that the plastic will expand. Sometimes you can get a kitchen knife down there and just tap it on the end with a hammer and that will help reduce it. But we've just about got that one out, but boy, that was a battle. Once we've got that out, we should just be able to split this again with our kitchen knife. Now, if your little wire has become detached from this, I'm just gonna show you a way of reattaching it without soldering. First, you take one of these little electrical spade connectors and then you remove the blue plastic bit and this little metal piece fits in there exactly. Now, all you need to do then is just use a set of more grips to just crush down that like so. And that, my friend, is not going anywhere. If your wire is really thin like this and you're going to be soldering that to that, that's not a good idea because you'd be putting 12 volts to that and there's only a few strands left. You're better off cutting the wire off and just putting a new piece on. It's easy to solder to here, which is what we're going to do. And if you've got a blob of solder left on here from the factory, then you can just sand that down and solder straight on top of it. The difficulty is soldering directly onto here. There you have it. This one here is the original from the factory, spot welded on. This one is using one of these little automotive spade clips here with no soldering. And this here is me soldering on to the old blob of solder that was there, i.e. this little thing there. Much easier to solder onto that than trying to solder onto the smooth metal. At the end of the video, I'll show you where we got the batteries, the bulbs and everything else from. But when you buy these batteries, they come 
wrapped together like this and don't take that wrapping off because the batteries are not spot welded or soldered together they're just held together by this plastic and if you do that you'll have to glue the two batteries back together so don't do that we're going to keep this tab at the bottom and we're going to just bend this tab at the top off so all you need to do is just bend it back and forwards a few times and you'll find it just snaps off like so all you have to do is take the old battery out, put a blob of conductive glue on the top of there, push this battery in like that, and it should be job done. As I mentioned, this tab here is going to be making contact with the tab inside there, and you can either hook it underneath behind it, or you can just push the battery straight in. That's held in there firmly, making good contact with the side there. You can test that with a voltmeter. And as I say, all we're going to do now is mix up some conductive glue and just glue that to there and we'll just peg that down overnight and that should be job done. So we've just made up some conductive glue, glued that down for good measure, just put, an, put a dab of the electrical tape on top of that. And what we'll do is we'll just weigh that down overnight and that should be perfect in the morning. If you can only get hold of single cell batteries and you want to add two of them together, you can just mix up some of this glue on the top of the battery like this and then just stick the other battery down or similarly if you've been stupid enough to take off that green coating and separate the two batteries but that will make perfect electrical contact just like that. You can use an elastic band to hold these together or if you've got a small G clamp or something like that I'm just going to give it a little bit more pressure just because we're gluing the two batteries together as well. Before you put the torch back together, remember to put a dab of grease on the slider there and the contacts and that'll help that switch slide up and down nice and easily. If you are planning on replacing the light bulb in your torch with an LED light bulb, it's really important that you get the correct type. Normally an LED light bulb will have the tip as the positive and the side as the negative, but you need it the other way around. You need to get a negative earth light bulb, whereby this here is negative and this is positive. If you get the wrong type of light bulb, it won't work. And that's because this is an LED and current only flows through it one way, whereas a standard light bulb current can flow through either way and it will still light up another tip i would give you is not to try and use conductive paste or conductive glue as it's sometimes called that comes in syringes like this it won't work as well and it won't dry properly this here will give you a really solid connection and it will conduct electricity here this is not designed to glue two things together it's designed to leave little traces on a PCB board. So don't waste your money buying one of these conductive glue paste syringes. We got our graphite powder from these guys here, Home Secure Shop, but you could also use graphite pencils for the same thing, but we use this for locks, £6.99 a tube. You get the liquid electrical tape off eBay from these guys here, £5.99 a tube. You can get those twin batteries once again off eBay from these guys here, JLS batteries, £11.95, not cheap, but they did arrive quickly and they are exactly what you need. You will need three volt E10 light bulbs and a positive earth, which you can get from these guys here off eBay for £2.91 for two of them.